Oh, welcome folks, out on the boat tomorrow. It's the night before, just getting some kit on board and sorting it all out. It is carnage here, you probably see there's stuff everywhere. Carnage. Anyway, we'll sort it out later on. But anyway, so yeah, getting my kit all ready for tomorrow. Cod fishing is tomorrow, the season's begun. There's a few codling being caught out on the sailing and around about marks. So, um, real wise, try my trusty Fathom uh, 30s, lever drags, really like them. Um, yeah, what more can I say? Fathoms, everyone knows Fathoms are absolutely cracking reels from Penn. Using an uptide as well, so got my uptide reel. I always use a fixed ball for uptiding on the boat. I have used multipliers, but it's, it's a bit more of a flaff to be fair. So, yeah, more, uh, fixable it is. Rod wise, <clears throat> just using my uh, Sea Hunter rods. Um, not got them all completely set up yet. I've got the reel on, but not set it all up. And, <coughs> excuse me. Kit wise, now I've gone slightly different on my kit now. I used to have boxes full of, you know, you know the boxes, you know, all of the different compartments and the rest of it, like beads, swivels, all your bits and pieces. I'm going away from it. I can't tell you how many times the boat has rocked and rolled and everything slid off the table or on the floor, there's beads and swivels and everything everywhere. Absolute nightmare. So, I've gone to these A5 pouches full of my kit. So in these ones I've got hooks and I've made up several pouches with a bit of a tangle. Get off. There we are. Normal sort of story, isn't it? Anyway, sort out later. Yeah, pouches full of rigs. So I have got um, different various of traces. I'm using a hundred pound mainline trace with size 5.0 hooks and different and varies of lengths I'm using also as well um, flyer hooks as well so this is, this is the flyers yep so let's have a look at the flyer rig why not <clears throat> and I really like this rig it really does seem to produce sometimes the downside to this rig though is so I'm just using the single hook on the actual end no panel just single hook and there's my flyer with a size let's get it let's get it let's get it size 1-0 why am i using a smaller hook well i really like just putting a small sliver of squid on that flyer so it's flapping around like that in the old uh, sea, and I can't tell you how many times I've caught a cod on that little uh, flyer. And when you got a cod on on that little one o hook, it's quite it's a strong one. And yeah, you got a decent cod on, and I mean ten plus, and you can see the hook in its mouth, and you think mm, this ain't good, this ain't good, and you can't wait to get it on board because you just know it could give out. It's a risky game. It is a risky game, and I have lost them as well on that. But I don't know what it is sometimes. You know, you've got this lovely big hook, 5-0 hook, with a nice big squid. Sometimes I'm doubling up squid, but they will take the smaller, thin sliver that's floating around all over the place. I don't know. I don't get it. But I like that rig. It seems to work. And I especially like that rig for uptiding. So that's the rig I'm going to use there. Well, tomorrow cod fishing there's all my bits and pieces that i would generally use so what i've done is if i just get a few bits and pieces out here so different beads and different bags and the like there we go swivels as well let's have a look at the final swivels there is somewhere that's the only thing i haven't done yet is labeled them up yet we've been a bit lazy sort of thing so there we go, so some swivels in that bag. So <clears throat> swivels and, and they're like in one bag, beads and little bits and nibbly bits in, in another bag, but they're all in bags 
So I only pull out the bag I want. Say if I only want the beads, I don't have to open the whole box. I just pull out the bag I want and just get out the beads or whatever I need. So less chance of having the beads and everything else all over the deck and all over the place. An absolute carnage. So that's the way I'm going. I'm not going to take this all of my credit, to be fair. I've taken this from Mark Williams, uh, from Mark Williams Sea Angling. Check his channel out. Um, he uses that a lot, especially for his sort of tackle setup and a lot, you know, especially for beach as well. But I'm going this way for the for the boat now as well. Um, and yeah, we'll give it a go, see how we can get on with it. If it turns out a bit of a nightmare, then I'll go back to the boxes, but I can't see it. I'm just fed up with picking up beads and, that, and everywhere. So, tomorrow you'll see me, hopefully, cod fishing and hopefully bagging a nice big cod that would be fantastic but my gut feeling is there's going to be a lot of uh, conger eels dogfish and hopefully some nice waiting but that's what i think we're going to end up we're going to be battling with the doggers and battling with the eels see you in a bit well just coming out the harbour now got the radar sounding zoomed right in on the uh, gps just so it gives me the marker of the channel and the radar is just to help confirm where the uh, marker posts are. And you can see the top right hand corner there, there's a post showing quite nicely on the radar to help me navigate through. Um, the posts are not lit all the way through on the way out of this channel, so which makes it particularly difficult times not got the right moonlight um, I have got an LED light beam on um, which helps but uh, the radar look at that two, two in front of me look so uh, yeah I'll stop filming navigate safely out let's get out fishing well we're here folks it's dark still hopefully you may see the boats in the distance there there's quite a few boats out here today actually and uh, I'm going to keep my wits about me make sure we don't get into those uh, strife or in troubles and it's uh, time to get a bit of fishing in I suppose I've got myself all set up no rods in the water yet but here we go happy days can't wait to get in the old uh, to the fishing and uh, hopefully bag myself a cod Well, I've got one knocking on the old uptider here. I don't think it's very big, and I think it's probably going to be a dogfish. Let's pull into it and see what happens. Well, there's some weight there. See what comes of it. I reckon it's going to be a dogger. A good old dogfish, if anything. Nope, it is a little strap conger, and that is small, isn't it? Gah, oh, dear. Anyway, let's get it back for another day. I'm sure we're going to see plenty of those today. Well, I've been getting a few bites and a full, few small ones as well. Not connecting, but I found out what they are. And let me show you. There we go. Not bad sized pallet to be fair, but there we are. There's obviously a few of those down there, living away at the baits. But oh yeah, happy days. It's now daylight, and uh, hopefully it's start beginning of a decent cod session. It's getting the slack tide, so this is prime time for me, like slackish tide. Anyway, let's get back to it. So bait of choice is what you would expect, really, using squid. And I've got some um, black lug wraps as well with me to uh, hopefully try and tempt a few cod. And uh, got one rattling. 
let's see what comes of this. I've had a few dogs so far. I've not bothered showing you. Um, I'm hoping for a bit more exciting than a dog. But the sun is just rising. There's a southeasterly wind at the moment, due to go to west. But who knows? Yeah, there's definitely something there. No fight to it whatsoever. Which she would suggest it is probably a dogfish. Oh no, it's another pelt. And not a bad size again. Hello, got a bit of a tangle up here. Right, what's going on here? I think it's just a question of bringing it in and we'll sort it all out. <clears throat> right, what's going on here then? Here we go. Let's underclip it. That's the good thing about using thermoclips or something similar. is you can unclip and get it untangled fairly quick, he says. Um, right, just trying to see which way to go with the line. There we go, done, and away. So, as I said, another pout. Not bad size, just slightly lip hooked as well. So let's get it back. And it's away. <laughs> the other rod is going now as well. <laughs> oh, we've definitely come over the top of a, a pouting mark, that's for sure. And I'll let, let that see. Oh, oh, hang on. Is that going to go a bit more? Oh, it's going a bit more. I am uh, cutting half a squid, laying a black lug on top. I haven't got my baiting tool that I normally use, so I'll lay it in and just uh, want a bit of elastic round just to make it a nice bait. And hopefully, making my bass, uh, bass, my bait lasted that little bit longer without getting shredded to death by the old pout by the look of it. General cast away, the boat is starting to swing round and uh, I'll try and keep the, uh, the lines away from each other, which can be difficult when you're swinging around and you can get pretty, diff pretty, oh, hey, that one's going quite well now, that one is going quite well, oh, yep, that is going quite well, yep, that is not a bad fish by the look of it. Not a great deal of fight though, not another great deal of fight. I really thought that was going to be a bit more something than, than that, to be fair. <laughs> I 
it's a conger. It's a conger. Right, any little strap? I don't know. I'm saying three or four pounds, something like that. There we go. Oi! Not the biggest. I'm not going to get it all the way in. I'm going to get it T-barred off alongside the boat and uh, go from there. It's away. We're really starting to move around now as well. My uptider, just leaving the, the drag nice and light because the boat's going round and I just want to leave it out there just a little bit longer. And uh, yeah. The, tide, the wind is starting to make the difference now, more so than the tide on the boat. Anyway, using some little muppets just for trials, see what it's all about. And um, this season, I am going for single hooks mainly instead of panel rigs because you know we do get a lot of conger eels now and. Uh, it can be an absolute nightmare trying to hunt, unhook a conger eel with a pennel hook. Um, you know, they, they're pretty lively, as you all know. And uh, yeah, just sort of go single hook. It's so much easier to unhook, especially if you've got two hooks in the eel. Um, Wayne uh, from uh, Wayne Combin uh, Anglin, he's, he's, he's been doing it for years, so I thought, why not? You know, learn from different people, you know, give it a try, and that's what it's about. No one knows everything, and it's always worth giving it a try. So, check out Wayne's uh, channel, and uh, yeah, let's get back to it. Prime time. Been getting quite a few little nibbles on this one, nothing major, and nothing of any worth. But, I'm just going to pull into it and see, oh, hello. Here we go, here we go. There's a bit of weight there. Nothing massive. But there's a bit of weight there. Oh, it really is like, oh, do you know what? I reckon this is a little wheel. I really do. A little, little wheel. There we go. Yeah. Look at that. There we go. We've had a few of those now. Let's get them T-barred off. So on my up tider, I used a panel rig and look what turned up. I had one with hook with a pelt on and the other hook with a dogfish on. It just shows what the battle is down there sometimes for a bit of food. Well I'm getting a few bites now on the uh, up tider and one on the down tider but nothing of any worth really they're just sort of nibbly bites really I'm guessing it's still those uh, pouting around so uh, anyway let's get let's get into this up tider see what's going on it's uh, it's broken the lid by the look of it and uh, oh yeah there's some weight there Getting a bit slow, the old fishing at the moment. Nothing really much happening. No, nothing on that. It's just broken the lid. A little bit of bait left. We'll rebait and get it back out there. Simple weave it in and out, in and out. 
and I've got a panel on this one as well so it helps when uh, hooking it up and casting it out there we go and just a couple of wrap rounds the hook one two that's it and I'll just nick it through like that yeah not the most prettiest of uh, presentations but I ain't too worried to be fair I just hook the wire under the, the hook like that so it lays like that just untangle the uh, it's a little bit of a tangle here let's just untangle that that's it so it lays a bit better there we go lays a lot better now wash the old hands and just a gentle flick out nothing too serious and I've just put it in the rod holder there job done and I'll just let it splay out now and once there's enough bow in it then uh, oh hello 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 look at this look at this look at this look at this oh, here we go look at that go that's bending over got this one going here now let's just put that back and we'll fight this one now oh <laughs> yeah that feels like any old day starts the way it's juddering it feels like an eel I got the drag not too uh, heavy just in case he wants to take a, do a dive it's definitely interesting when you got a bit of tide that's for sure It's running, actually this is, what, what's going on here? This is, I reckon this is a bloody smooth around the way it's running. Look at that. Look at that, a smooth round. Crikey me, what's going on around here? It's supposed to be cod fishing, not smooth round fishing. Anyway, let's get it in, T-bar it off. Crikey, unreal, absolutely unreal. Where's the tea bar? Oh, let's get stuck in. Going off like a steam train. So, so anyone that may be interested in putting a little bit of storage on their boat, I brought that from IKEA and it sticks on the actual boat instead of so no screws and anyone who's got a boat know that it's not a good idea to put screws if you can help it. I know we have to, but it is nice if you don't have to sort of thing. So yeah, perfect full story in my bits and pieces, normally there's my knife sheath that goes in there and uh, a couple of disgorgers types, t-bar, you know, you know where it goes but yeah, just a little handy thing so nice and easy to get hold of so there's my gunnels there and I can literally just get down and grab it and away sort of thing so yeah just another little addition to my boat um, I also have a little tub there again from Ikea uh, I have a little bit of water in there just to keep the old hands clean because I like to try and keep the boats clean as I can and again I normally put my squid in there but it's in the cool box at the moment and uh, yeah so just a couple of little setups I use on my boat may help some people may not you may have your own ideas 
but that's me and hello both rods are going now well I thought I'd just have a little reel up and just to see what the baits were looking like in Chickham and it's slack tied and look what turned up didn't even know it was on a little fawny absolutely dinky of a fawny this one yeah come out there at the sun there we are Anyway, they're lovely to see these fish. Absolutely lovely. Just don't see them so much as you two. I'm getting back in the water, by the way. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah, lovely to see the rays. It really is. You know, they just don't seem to be as many as they used to be, to be fair. Um, we were talking about it with uh, friends, you know, we are talking about the rays and we just don't see, see them so much. You know, especially the underlets. They seem to have been taking a bit of a battering, really, to be fair, I think. And... Uh, it's always nice to catch a ray, and as you would expect, slackish tide come on the rays. So uh, last year, I had truckloads of spotted ears. Last year, loads of spots, uh, rays. And uh, yeah, not seen one yet, but who knows, who knows. I've had a bite for quite some time on this left one ear. I'm just gonna get into it. There's a lot of weight on it now. And I'm thinking it might be a conger to be honest yet, but I don't think it's a cod but there's certainly oh yeah there's some weight there very nice no real fight at the moment but there's a lovely bend to that rod but no weight no, no sorry no fight just weight it's definitely definitely not a cod Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. It's a bullus. Oh, that's not a bad size either. Look at that. Give me you. Right, I'm gonna go and, I'm gonna net that one. Wow, I wasn't expecting that, a bullus. I really wasn't. I really thought this today was gonna be congas and, and I've got a net caught. Look at that. Get that net underneath it. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Jesus. Oh, no, it's not in there. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. It's hard sometimes knitting on your own. Come on. There we are. Done it. Woo. Woo hoo hoo. It is hard sometimes knitting on your own. Anyway, it's in the net. And we'll have a lovely little show in a minute. That is a nice size. That is a nice size bullass. Right, let's get it out. Right, let's get this beauty unhooked. Right, where is the under? There you go. A nice little bullass. Anyway, let's get back to the old water. For another day, happy days. Well, I've had the bullass, which is a royal top dollar one. I'm really happy about that. And there's a boat next to me, come here about an hour and a half ago, something like that. And a mighty cheer and his bag of cod. I'm over the moon for him. Gives me that a bit more enthusiasm. So hopefully I'm gonna catch a cod and I can show you. Fingers crossed. Is it going to be a unicorn? Tide slackening, it's prime time. 
let's hopefully we get one in the boat. There's a hell of a bend on this rod. And this is a decent hill, I reckon. Jesus. I have to wind the old uh, clutch up, I think. Drag even. It's definitely shaking a lot. Let's get this one out of the way. This is going to be the bit of the run around. This is going to be a tidy old eel, I reckon. It's gone slack tide, and the eels have come on the feed. It's coming up slowly. Definitely in the other way, it's spinning round. Crikey, this is a piece of an eel. Let me see. If, let me see. <laughs> Crikey, let me see if I can show you this. Oh mate. Oh my god. Let me show you, see if I can do this. I'm gonna have to undo the phone. Look at the size of that beastie. Yeah, if I can see him round. That's a fair old size. Oh, he's tangling up. Well, that's it, folks. The day is over. What a day. Fish all day, really. Uh, what have we had? We've had, let me count this up. We've had conger, truckloads, doggers, truckloads, pout, bullass, uh, smooth hounds. What else have we had? Oh, yeah, fawny ray. That's six species. Yeah, I think that's it. Six species, but man alive, the the the, the doggers and the conger eels are absolutely re relentless. But it's a bit of a strange one because the doggers were having a bit of a feed up, but hardly any congers at that time. Then suddenly it swapped round. The doggers went and the congers started, which is a bit strange. But there we are, um, and that's it. Just about to reel up, head for home, get back on the pontoon, and. Uh, another day done and another session done and uh don't forget all importantly hope you enjoyed first off and uh if you would subscribe that'd be fantastic and give us the old thumbs up and any comments just give us you know any comments you have just chuck them down and i'll try and answer them um always welcome comments and uh see you next time